This is BBC One for the Midlands. Good afternoon. West Midlands police say they've uncovered a £2.5 million international credit card fraud. Bogus cards have been used to buy expensive electrical goods and cars in parts of England, Wales and elsewhere in Europe. The TSB and the Midland Bank are among several financial organisations believed to have suffered substantial losses. Three people have appeared in court, but the police investigation is continuing. Detectives say the fraud was more sophisticated than in previous incidents. Uh, the banks have approached us and informed us that there has been uh, similar defrauding of uh, money from credit cards, but this time it's by electronic means. They're able to uh, use the card uh, without the knowledge of the trader that it is in fact uh, not correct and they're able to obtain property and money. There's growing concern today for the safety of a 13-year-old girl who's been missing from her home in Birmingham for a week. Amina Hashib was last seen near her home in Small Heath last Wednesday. The police and her family have issued an urgent appeal for her to return or to get in touch. The chairman of Coventry City Football Club has revealed a pitch protest by fans prevented the club getting millions of pounds worth of investment from an Arab prince. Chairman Brian Richardson told the club's annual general meeting the protests after the resignation of manager Bobby Gould caused the Prince to back out of joining the Sky Blues board. He didn't want his own family to be subject to abuse. Well, the future of BBC Radio WM's award-winning Asian network has been assured. The service, which broadcasts each evening to 100,000 listeners, has been given two new medium-wave frequencies. Good evening, this is Kowanta Kapo on the Asian Network bringing you the... Five hours of programmes between 7pm and midnight in English, Gujarati, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and Punjabi. Two years ago they learned they may lose their old frequencies. Today, two new ones from the Department of Trade and Industry. The BBC have won a major victory here. We're the first local radio station in this country ever to get back frequencies that we haven't been told we were had to surrender them. It's a wonderful moment for us and a wonderful moment for the community, and our future is totally secure, no danger at all. The new frequencies are 12.96 a.m. in Birmingham and 14.13 a.m. in the Black Country. Football and Aston Villa's 2-1 win at Norwich last night ended their barren spell. It was their first win in the Premiership in seven matches. Villa, desperately in need of a win, were a goal down after 26 minutes when Teal's back pass was picked up by Steve Sutton. Bosnich narrowed the angle but was beaten at the near post. Norwich were guilty of the same slackness in defence when Culverhouse turned the ball back to his goalkeeper. Ray Houghton took his chance to put Villa level. Three minutes later, Dean Saunders scored spectacularly for Villa, his second goal in 12 games and Villa's first win since November the 20th. It keeps on raining. A look now at the weather. Here's Shafali. Thank you, David. Well, we're still being fed quite a mild flow of air, but the weather fronts haven't gone through yet. So that basically makes this afternoon a grey, grizzly, wet one. Having said that, though, there could be a few bright spots, but they're most likely in parts of New Staffordshire. As for temperatures, we've got highs of 8 Celsius this afternoon, and that's not quite as mild as yesterday, but still not bad, especially with the wind staying fairly light. For tonight, slightly different story. For most of the time, it'll be dry, but any showers that do crop up should be mainly around the west in particular Hereford and Worcester. And there's just a chance of the odd wintry shower up on the high ground in North Staffordshire. Temperature-wise, lows of three in the light, southwesterly wind. As for tomorrow, brighter conditions, but still damp. That's it for me for now. Finally, an inmate at Stafford Jail is facing a disciplinary hearing today after a failed escape attempt left him dangling from a window. The man was rescued by fire crews when he was found hanging from a toilet window because his rope of knotted sheets was too short. On Midlands today, meanwhile, at 6.15, the Midlands MP, who wants children to be properly prepared for parenthood while they're still at school. But that's been the Midlands so far today. Okay. Nurse? Do I look like a nurse? Does he look like a doctor? Who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Regis's houseman. Who was the other doctor? The one I saw before? He was the registrar. 
Oh, I want to get better, not marry. Does this look like treatment? Thank you very much, Dr. Jensen. Brand new comedy, Health and Efficiency, tonight at 8.30 on BBC One. In ten minutes, our visit to Ramsey Street at the holiday start time at ten past one. Now on BBC One, the news at one o'clock with Edward Sturton. Good afternoon. A soldier has been shot dead in Northern Ireland. The first terrorist killing there since the Downing Street Peace Declaration two weeks ago. It happened at Cross Maglen in South Armagh. The soldier died in hospital shortly afterwards. The soldier who was killed in Cross Maglen this morning is the first person to have been murdered in Northern Ireland since the joint declaration by the British and Irish governments two weeks ago. He is the seventh member of the security forces to die in single-shot sniper attacks this year. The killing follows two IRA mortar bomb attacks in the Belfast area. The first attack was at a flat complex on the edge of the city centre. The terrorists held a middle-aged couple captive and placed a horizontally fired mortar in the front garden. It was aimed at a passing security force patrol, but apparently misfired, exploding against the wall instead shortly after 8 o'clock. One soldier was slightly injured. A number of flats were damaged in the attack. Local people were angry and frustrated. Just ask them why. I mean, why? I mean, you know, we all want peace and why can't we have it? A mortar bomb was used in another attack on a security force patrol shortly after midnight. It happened in pole glass on the outskirts of West Belfast. One of the vehicles was struck, but no one was injured. The terrorists had planned a third mortar attack close to the Falls Road in the west of the city. It was hidden in a hedge, but was discovered and defused by the army. Tara McIntyre, BBC News, Belfast. The government is to allow parents to set up their own schools with government money. They'll have to find 15% of the initial cost themselves, but they'll be allowed to operate them as single-sex schools with selective entrance, like the old grammar schools. Labour has accused the government of turning the clock backwards. Some of the schools which adopted out of local authority control initially wanted to limit their pupil intake by being selective, just like the old grammar schools. But the Department for Education refused that request. The grammar schools had a good reputation for solid academic achievement, but were criticised for causing class divisions. But now the department says parents, religious groups or even local business people will be invited to set up their own grammar schools. If they can raise 15% of the capital costs, the government will fund the rest. Each school will be free to choose its own method of entry, although an 11-plus exam is not favoured, and could specialise in subjects like languages or technology. It widens choice, increases diversity, and allows parents to make a choice for their children, not only meeting the abilities of their children, but also meeting the aptitudes of their children for technology, for dance, for art, over and above the basic national curriculum. It's not a better deal for parents. It will mean that the majority of children will lose out if we have the reintroduction of selective education. That's really looking back to failed initiatives of the past, and I think that it's not what parents want. Parents want good local schools in which they can have full confidence. The proposals won't help those religious groups who've been campaigning for their own schools. The government says it will only give the go-ahead where there's a clear need for a new school. And that will also disappoint many in the Conservative Party who've never been reconciled to the loss of grammar schools. Richard Hannaford, BBC News. In Cairo, there are more talks aimed at ending the deadlock over Palestinian self-rule in Jericho and the Gaza Strip. The PLO leader Yasser Arafat and President Mubarak of Egypt are examining the latest Israeli proposals on border crossings and territory. Last night, the Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres flew home expressing optimism, but the Palestinians say there's no firm agreement yet. Israeli troops shot dead three Palestinian guerrillas last night. They crossed the Lebanese border into northern Israel near Dan Kibbutz, just south of the security zone along the border. The Israelis say they killed the three men in a brief gun battle. Shortly afterwards, Israeli helicopters fired rockets at a building in South Lebanon, killing one man. Here, New Year political hostilities have opened early. The Conservative Party chairman, Sir Norman Fowler, has accused the Labour leader, John Smith, of being trapped in a 1970s time warp. But Mr Smith's deputy, Margaret Beckett, said Sir Norman was desperate to talk about anything except Conservative tax increases. At Tory headquarters, party strategists are determined after the internal feuding of the past 12 months to begin the new year on the attack. Sir Norman accuses the Labour leader of being trapped in a 1970s time warp, devoid of any new ideas or policies. New ideas, 
new concepts, all the running is being made by the Conservative Party as far as policy making is concerned. Labour have simply contracted out of this whole process in spite of all the promises uh, that uh, Mr Smith made at the time of his election. There's a fermentative deba debate in the Labour Party, whereas the Tory party won't even allow to discuss VAT on fuel at their conference. It isn't we who have a problem with policy, it isn't we who have a problem with the British people, it's the Tories. However, the Tory criticism is echoed by some on the left, who fear Mr Smith is adopting the government's agenda on reform of the welfare state and the economy. Although Tory strategists know with local council and European elections ahead, they must throw Labour onto the political defensive, privately they believe their fortunes will hinge more on the economy. And the hope now of ministers is that economic recovery will pave the way for their own political recovery. Norman Smith, BBC News, at Conservative Central Office. Police in New York State have charged two men in connection with a series of parcel bomb attacks in which five people died. One of the men, named Michael Stevens, is the estranged husband of a woman whose mother, sister and stepfather were among those killed. The four parcel bombs exploded at separate addresses on Tuesday night. The Royal College of Nursing has set up a helpline for nurses worried about their pensions. The college has organised the telephone hotline because it's concerned about those who left the NHS pension scheme for private plans. It follows a report by the Securities and Investment Board that says 90% of workers switching to private schemes may have been badly advised. There's a call for more people from ethnic minorities to come forward as potential bone marrow donors. The Anthony Nolan Bone Marrow Trust says the likelihood of a donor being suitable is much greater if he or she is from the same ethnic background as the patient. Seven-year-old Lee Heslop has leukemia. Without a bone marrow transplant, he may die. No compatible match has been found from his family. Now his chances of survival depend on a donor of his own Afro-Caribbean background. His mother, Carol, believes they're frightened to volunteer. When I heard about, like, a bone marrow transplant, I was thinking, God, I'm going to take it out my bone or am I going to have to have an operation or something. But it's nothing like that at all. It's just an injection in your hip. Lee faces his uncertain future with fortitude. Sometimes I feel sick and can't walk very far and my legs get tired. John Tritius is a Greek Cypriot. He too has searched in vain for an ethnic donor to provide the bone marrow transplant that would save his life. I've got a pretty rare blood group and it looks like it has to come from, from ethnic minorities and it would probably be a Cypriot that we're looking for, a Greek Cypriot. Experts say patients' best chances of a match are from the same ethnic background. So if you are an Indian person, uh, the best chance of finding an unrelated donor who matches with you is from a population of people from India, preferably from the same part of India as you came yourself. It's believed some ethnic volunteers may be discouraged because donors have to undergo a general anaesthetic and rest for a week. But doctors and their endangered patients say it's a small price to pay to save lives. Gary Lloyd, BBC News. That's it for now. We'll be back at six. Good afternoon. We're going to see some very unsettled weather through the New Year holiday. And we're certainly seeing quite a bit of heavy rain over southern parts of the country at the moment, as you can see from the weather radar. Not only wet weather, but windy weather, as you can be able to see from this uh, gust table. Some very strong winds indeed through the English Channel, giving some very rough sea conditions. Not the best of weather for any cross-channel booze bandits. But uh, why are we getting that unsettled weather? Well, it's all down to that deepening low. And as that runs in, some very strong to gale or even severe gale force winds will run along the English Channel. The wet weather is going to move quite swiftly eastwards. Brighter, showery weather coming along behind during the afternoon and then into the evening. But a different story for Northern Ireland and up in Scotland. Here there'll be some sunshine, but there will be some showers, and those showers are likely to be heavy and wintry with some sleet and some snow up over the hills. The warmest weather, or the mildest air, is going to be in the south today. Here temperatures could well just make double figures, but remember the winds are going to be very strong and it's going to be chucking it down with rain at times. Further north, that's where the cooler air is likely to be, but that's where there's going to be more in the way of sunshine. So uh, it may well turn out to be quite a pleasant day over Scotland and Northern Ireland. Now this evening we'll find that rain moving away to the east, the showers coming in 
from the west they'll keep going over Northern Ireland, Northern England and Scotland and I think that'll be the case through the night. There could well be quite a bit of snow up on the higher ground of Scotland. Once again some of the showers are going to be heavy and thundery in the north and in the west with some protection from the showers uh, provided by the Welsh mountains for the Midlands and southeastern England. Certainly going to be quite a chilly night up in Scotland of frost and it's uh, going to be quite chilly further south as well. Temperatures down to around about five or six degrees and fairly breezy as you can see. On New Year's Eve, well, strong winds indicated by those tightly packed isobars, and then another Atlantic system will be running in for New Year's Day. So it'll be sunshine and blustery showers on New Year's Day, some of them heavy and wintry, with more wind and rain on the way to welcome in the new year. That's it. <laughs> To anyone within the sound of my voice, this is Captain James T. Kirk of the Federation Starship Enterprise. A hostile force has taken control of our vessel. You are a man. We'll see. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, New Year's Eve, 6.30 on BBC One. A ginormous meteor is heading straight for the Earth. Can disaster be averted? Sean Connery and Natalie Wood head the cast of our starstruck movie in 20 minutes. First on BBC One, hitting the bullseye, one of the neighbours. Neighbours, everybody needs good.